How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with my good friend Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. I bet you guys are having a way better long weekend than I am. It's Labor Day weekend here in the United States. Everybody's grilling, everybody's barbecuing, everybody's watching wrestling. So much wrestling over the next two weeks. So much wrestling last week. I, I want to apologize to everybody. I was not here. And Jim Valley, uh, at the last minute, was able to sub in for me, which uh, was fantastic because I thought it would be terrible if you guys did not get a show, considering All, all In was last Sunday. I, um, I have COVID right now. I'm doing the show. Sit six feet away from me. I am, I am sick as a dog. Uh, but I wanted to do the show today because I don't want to miss another week. But I went on a cruise with my family. This is this is the uh, little intro here. And I came back, and obviously, because it's disgusting, and everybody's coughing on everybody, and everybody's swimming in the same body of water, I came back with COVID. And this week I've been suffering. It's all right. It's just a head cold. It, you know, it's, a, it's an annoying, lingering head cold. But I'm here today to talk about wrestling. But, you know, here's the pro. I did nothing yesterday except watch Bash in Berlin. I caught up on all my wrestling, everything that I missed. Uh, it was nice to kind of do a marathon of 12 hours of pro wrestling. I forgot what that's like. But today on the show, we're going to be talking about Bash in Berlin. Obviously, some all-in stuff, all-out preview. NXT tonight. You got an NXT pay-per-view tonight. And a whole lot more happening. Collision. Dynamite, New Japan put on a great show. I'm going to break this all down for you. When we come back, we're going to go right into Bash in Berlin. I enjoyed it. I want to know what you think. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline, Sunday edition of the show. You know, my producer was asking me, he's like, I can't believe you got COVID on the cruise. I'm like, I can. But do you know who I was with, MG? I will tell you why I got COVID. And who would that be? My my uh, my wife, it, 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 everything is a small world, especially in the world of radio. My wife is the godmother to Chauncey Hayden from the formerly of the Howard Stern show, Chauncey Hayden's daughter. And Chauncey and his daughter came from Ireland. And oh, nice. they have it also. And I think he was patient zero. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that man infected me and I will not forgive him. Uh, let's talk about this. Bash in Berlin highlights. I enjoyed the show. It was a nice, quick show. Nice and easy to watch. Started at one o'clock. I mean, a two hour pre-show is insane for like a three and a half hour show. How long did the show go? It wasn't very long. It was just about three hours. Actually, I think it was three hours. I think yeah. they went off the air at 5 p.m. Uh, uh, our time, uh, no. Eastern time. No way. Or maybe Impossible. Three. No, no, no. I'm it sorry. Was like three. I'm sorry. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Eastern you sure time. it was four? My bad. Well, yes. Whatever it was. It yeah. was very quick. Very quick and very easy to watch. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, it, was, it was great. But there were some interesting things. You know, Randy Orton did a sit-down interview with Michael Cole. And he said a couple things here. Um he said things are a lot better. Things have changed tremendously over the last year. Uh, he didn't shy away from saying the morale backstage is a lot better. And uh, it's what it's like for talent if they need time off for any reason. You know, th things like that are happening where before it didn't. You were terrified to ask for time off. You were terrified to do all these things. Very different company now. And that's interesting to see. He also discussed CM Punk returning on the same show uh, as he, he as his return. He was really he said he was pissed off because he found out an hour before. That must be annoying, and obviously yeah. Punk Triple overshadowed. Him aside. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and Punk overshadowed uh, that whole thing. Uh, but since, uh, but uh, yeah, that was the one that he was in the ring and they were like talking to each other, right? When mm -hmm. Punk was on yeah. the ramp. Uh, but since he was able to talk about talk to Punk, they laughed about it. Uh, interesting stuff. Hunter also did it, uh, made a statement during the interview. He said that they broke the arena gate record. Now, that is for all time. 
And, you know, and they've that, done it every one of these. Every one of these, they seem to break the last I, one. So. Fascinating because, um, you know, the Garden, they packed 18,000-something 18, 18, in that building, and that's a very expensive building to run, and that didn't break it with 18,000. But Germany, with 13,000 and some change, was able to break it. I'm curious if it has to do with the Euro conversion. Maybe. So what would be the average ticket price? It's got to be 300 US, right? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what that what that record was. I don't have that number in front of me, but that's me. But yeah. But that I'm that's just guessing. I'm not even That's something, you know, that they're able to still get so many people. You know, these international shows, they're going to continue on like this and they're going to do great crowds. Um it was a great crowd. It was a fantastic crowd. Very different than the French crowd, very different than an English crowd. Uh I like seeing the difference in all the European crowds uh for them but i enjoyed it and let's go right into the show cody rhodes opened the show defeating kevin owens to retain the undisputed championship this went about 23 minutes the crowd was as expected very hot for everything uh the story was that kevin owens thought cody had a bad knee uh from the european tour he was reluctant reluctant at times you know this this happens so often now in wrestling where the opponent is trying to be good and will not take advantage of a weak point. Well, it seems recently, right, with the MJF story with uh, MJF. Will Ospreay on, okay, yeah, MJF, so, Will Osprey, the, now the they're shoe, doing the same Tony thing. Storm in the shoe, the bum knee, <laughs> yep. the bracelet. <laughs> You'll get to the bracelet, I'm oh, sure. Oh, I will get to that 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 bracelet. I will get to that bracelet. <laughs> you and I both have issues with that. I know. I hate that. <laughs> bracelet it's Fukaka it's <laughs> for cock the bracelet that is not a curse by the way you don't need to dump me out for that word mm -hmm. uh he was reluctant to do it uh at one point wade barrett said that he lacked killer instinct but ko ring uh but ko ringside at, at at ko was ringside and he told him to shut up uh i thought it was fine i thought it was really good so cody went up uh, to do a spot, was it? What was it off the top? And he, his knee was banged up. He couldn't do it. it was it like a uh, cutter he was going for? Yeah, yeah. He was. I think he was going for the Cody cutter. Yeah. Uh, Cody hit two crossroads, but the third one was countered with a stunner. Kevin Owens went up for a swanton. Cody got his knees up, his bad knee with his bad knee. Yeah. With his bad knee, <laughs> then got up, hit a third crossroads, and won. It was fine. It was a good match. You know, it, it, it was a very standard match. I thought it was... Everything on this card was good. That, I didn't have a problem was, with anything. To me, yeah, that to me was the word standard is basically what I got out of this whole I, show. And I'm not saying it, it in a bad, bad way. All. It was just a no. really good standard WWE show. I would say every match was fine. The, fo the next match was probably the weakest, and it was still a fine match. Bianca Belair and Jade, Jade Cargill won the women's tag titles defeating uh, Dawn and Fire. This went about 12 and a half minutes. Again, very standard. The story was the dominance of Jade and Bianca, title on them. Uh, Jade has still not been pinned, so they're continuing that. It was a fine match. Everybody worked hard for this. Did I love it? Yeah, it was fine. It was a fine match. 12 and a half minutes. The next match. Now, this was fascinating. CM Punk, <laughs> Drew McIntyre, strap match. A lot of people were wondering, what are the rules for this strap match, right? They did. People did not realize it was a four corners match. So can I just uh, backdrop? When this was announced on Raw a few weeks ago, yeah. they, he said a four corners match. And but I just, nobody I, picked I it up. Gasp. But nobody, yeah, nobody really caught on to what that meant. And no one talked about it. So, yeah, it was kind of a surprise for everybody. It, and, the, you know, the four corners, you know what I think of every time I think of a four corner strap match, like old school 1980s. Lex Luger. You, stay, I think old school 1980s WWF. Okay. Mm -mm. You know, like in the garden, a strap match with, like, you know, Sergeant Slaughter and whoever, you know, or Bob Backlund and whoever. It is such, you don't see that four corners match. And generally, no. They are so hokey and terrible. It doesn't hold up to time with everything we've seen in professional wrestling. That match does not hold up. I will say this was fantastic. I 
my kids, this is the first time they've ever seen a strap match. And again, I view things through their lens because I'm jaded. Mm -hmm. uh, I cover <laughs> pro wrestling. I speak to Dave Meltzer. You know, I have a very different viewpoint than my children and, and quite frankly, the entire viewing audience. My kids loved it. I did too. I thought this was very well done. Did you like this match? I did. I, I actually, what I liked the most about, I did like that they tried to explain the four corners concept with the yeah. lights. The lights, yeah. But one of the lights wasn't working. Well, they weren't turning <laughs> off, first. and Michael Cole was yelling about yeah. it. <laughs> Michael Cole, I think, was uh, passive aggressively yelling at his production to fix it <laughs> on air, which I thought I got a kick out of. Yeah, but, I yeah. I got mm -hmm. I enjoyed this tremendously. They actually did a halfway decent job at explaining the rules, which I very much liked. Uh, mm -hmm. It looked like they, like we said, they had some technical difficulties. CM Punk was bleeding. He got some color. I don't know how he got it, but he got it. Uh, Punk hit the GTS. He had multiple GTSs. He had three GTSs. He got the bracelet. He touched the corners. Uh, there was a nice sharpshooter spot where Drew was tapping out, but he couldn't submit. Yeah. Because it's a four corners match. That was interesting. I like what they did here. I, I really... I, when, I, when I realized that, yes, it is a four corners match, because I did not remember, I was so bummed out. But, man, you know what? It's the talent, not the match. And these two, in 19 minutes, told a great story. When we come back, we're going to talk about this a little bit more and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on X at Andrew Zarian. I'm also on Instagram, but... I don't know. You can follow me there. There's no scoops. There's no wrestling talk on Instagram. Just me and my family. That's it. But you can follow me there. Uh, I wanted to add about the CM Punk stuff. Like I said, I very much enjoyed this. Um, I, 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 you know, it's always pleasant when you when you go in with a preconceived idea of how the match is going to go, and it actually does the exact opposite. In this case, uh, I did not think a strap match would be a great story to tell, but it was a great story to tell, and they got everything out of the way. After the match, Punk mentioned, you know, by the ending of the match, it looked like they're, they're going to have a match at Bad Blood, right? That's how I felt. Steel Cage, whatever yes. whatever you could do. Whatever that Possibly last Hell one would in be. Cell. Yeah. And, and to me, it would, it, to me, it, okay, let's say they do a Hell in a Cell. They could do a classic match. Punk could lose. Seth intervenes. And now you set up Seth and Punk for the next program. However, Punk in that press conference was kind of alluding that he wants a title shot and he wants Gunther. I don't think it's time for that. I mean, it there's would be interesting yeah. if he goes and they, you know, toss of... him. There's a lot of different ways they could do this. There's a three-way match, obviously, between Drew and Seth and Punk that they got to do. You're forgetting one major story beat here. Bross and Reed. Oh, Bronson Reed and Seth. Yes, he killed him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah he killed him. So we got They got to resolve that. At they some have point. to resolve Almost that also. To get get back to that three way. You know. Yeah. So, mm. how about Bronson Reed and Punk? Oh, I mean, Bronson Reed on Raw is going through everybody. So yep. it's possible we're going to get that at some point. Yep. We'll see what happens and, tomorrow on Raw. I'm curious. Uh, this is actually one of the first Raws I'm very uh, curious about seeing. Uh, Interesting stuff. Uh, let's go into this. Uh, mixed tag. Really, I, I, this was a really fun match. This was your, your match of the night. It was for a weird, for a couple of reasons. I think it's because it had two stories that they're telling at the same time. And it was just, there was so much going on. And I was intrigued by what was going to happen. Obviously, Rhea Ripley is so over. Um, but. Yeah, this was just a lot of fun. You knew it was going to be a, there was going to be a lot of uh, overbooking and run-ins, and it was, and yeah, it just was fun. It was, it was I, a lot I of fun. It, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, the story obviously is Dominic and and Rhea and and Liv. You know that that wacky love triangle. Now Damian, what are, what are their names? The the Terror Twins. The Terror Twins. Yes. Yeah, that's what I called my kids when they were under two. <laughs> I, I'm not even joking. That Perfect. was the nickname, the Terror Twins. <laughs> uh, Judgment Day got involved. Uh, by the way, uh, 
Rhea and and Damian won. They beat Dominic and Liv. Rhea got uh the, the very Rhea Ripley pin on Liv Morgan. I'm gonna leave it up to your imagination on what I mean by that. Her signature <laughs> pin. Uh, Rhea did beat up Dom a little bit, but it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't go too far. Uh, interesting stuff. I thought this was great. I I love Damian, man. He's he's fantastic, and I'm so glad that you know he's still in a prime position after that title run. I I would love to see more from him. Uh, and I want to see where this goes. I think it's obviously Finn. It's this... Finn and Damian. That's where the match is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I felt like the end of this, like I was like, man, I think I like uh, um, Damian more now than I did when he had the title. Yeah. Just the way they did this match because they made both of them look super strong, yeah. especially him. Main event. This went thirty-five minutes. Gunther defeated Randy Orton to retain the title. The story with the crowd was so hot for everything. Uh, they were hot for Randy. They were hot for Gunther. Uh, you know, hometown welcome, great intro. The, you know what a story Gunther has, and we were talking about Damian Priest. Damian and Gunther really parallel, in my opinion. Um, you know, they were local independent wrestlers that worked very hard to get out of that. And you know, Damian went to Ring of Honor and went to NXT, and he went down that route. Gunther was a guy that did not want to come over to the states. That's why he stayed in Europe so long. He was a heavier guy, and look at him now. He put the work in. He's the world heavyweight champion, headlining a show in Berlin, his adoptive home, right? That's what they said yeah. on commentary. Went 35 minutes with Randy Orton. This was a very hard-hitting match. It was a slow-paced match. Uh, they, The match ended with a sleeper. Think of that. <laughs> okay, think of that with all the high spots with the tiger drivers and with the with every wacky, crazy finish move. A sleeper was one of the most devastating moves that this man could have done. I like how Randy Orton wrestles. It is so reminiscent of an era that does not exist anymore. Same with Gunther. Methodical, hard hitting, slow paced. It was right up my alley. And then you go on Twitter and you start seeing the comments it was a mixed bag either you loved this match or you thought it was so boring i did not find it boring whatsoever i thought it was fantastic you know what this match could have been this match what? could have headlined uh the the garden in 1975 <laughs> <laughs> and it would have been perfect yeah you know? yeah yeah you know? 35 uh, yeah. minutes mm -hmm. just a little you know if you had a little blood it would have been perfect mm -hmm. yeah. that would have been it at the garden this was a, a great, I, I, and I love that kind of stuff. You know, I love seeing a difference in style and a contrast in style. This was one of those. You don't get to see a 35-minute match like this. Everything is high spots and flips and jumps. There was none of that in this. No. We saw Randy jump one time. Nobody wants to see it again. When he did the split, remember? <laughs> he did a fired up baby face, he rah, rah, and he did a jumping split. So, post-show, Cody filled in for a Triple H that went back to see his daughter go off to college. Did you see his daughter's picture? I did not. Looks just like Steph. Does it? Does yep. It? Wow. That McMahon, that McMahon uh, gene. <laughs> Very strong. Uh, she, she, uh, I, I forgot what college she's going to, but I guess she's, he, uh, he went to send her off. I can't believe it. She's 18 years old. Unbelievable. Oh. Good, good for, for good for good that. For them. Yeah, congratulations yeah, to the whole family. Uh, he announced mm -hmm. the largest grossing pay per view, like we said. Uh, so Cody was asked about the Vince documentary. So this week, it was announced that Netflix will be premiering a six episode Mr. McMahon docu series. This debuts on September twenty fifth, Wednesday. The project has been be has been developed since twenty twenty. It obviously evolved because of the sexual abuse allegations made against McMahon by Janelle Grant. This is, uh, I believe, is being produced by Bill Simmons and the Tiger right. King executive producer, Chris Smith. WWE has nothing to do with this docuseries. Uh, Janelle Grant was not involved in this documentary, and a lot of people are questioning why. Listen, it's an ongoing case. I don't think people are going to talk especially putting the case in jeopardy, especially on Janelle Grant's side. So I, I understand that. The question, however, came off very aggressive 
to Cody. And a lot of people are taken back by it. Um, he, I forgot who the journalist was in the in the scrum that asked the question. I can't even remember the phrasing know. of it. But when, but when he asked it, he it was almost apprehensive. He took a deep breath before he asked it. It's like, yeah, should I ask this? And he did. And it's like, oh, dude. <laughs> he asked about he asked about backstage chatter. He asked about um. You yep. know, why people mm-hmm. have been silent about it, why the talent has been silent, what Cody's opinion is. Uh, Cody, you know, he, I would say he did the best he Gave could with an answer like that. Diplomatic answer. Yeah. Because listen, you're kind of in character. You're kind of not in character. Um, you don't know what you want, can say, and don't want to say, and not defending, not, not criticizing. I'm just laying it out. Um, I think he did the best he could. I think the Game of Thrones comment was a little off. Essentially what he <laughs> said, uh, I don't know when I'll get to it. I think I'll eventually get to watching it, but I can't tell you I'll get to watch it when it comes out. I'm really behind on TV. I'm really obsessed with Game of Thrones. <laughs> and essentially the, the about the locker room, he doesn't want to speak for other people. But I, it, it was, he was not going to get an answer. No. I'm just, and nobody will get an answer if they ask this question. But obviously, there's the answer is the answer. answer. Listen, that. these are, yeah. yeah, there's only two people, and the answer is the same. If you are a a normal, common sense, decent human being, your answer is going to be, whatever I've read is heinous. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything beyond that. I don't, it's a disgusting, disgusting thing, if true. I don't know. That's my comment. I mean, that is the most diplomatic way to put it. And that is the truth. That's how everybody feels. These allegations are insane. And they're not insane in the sense that they can't be true. Just so wild that it, it's heinous. But correct. they don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure Cody does not know Janelle Grant. And Janelle does not really know Cody. And he's just going based on what he what he thinks is the best answer. I don't give him crap for that um you know i don't i I think the journalist asked the question and he tried something i don't i don't think it's his fault either but i uh a very uh i'm very interested in this documentary because netflix and and wwe have a work relationship now the company is headed there and i don't think netflix will put on anything to jeopardize the quality of their of the billion dollar product that they're they've invested money in over the next 10 to 15 years, they're not going to start off jeopardizing this. So I don't know what this documentary will actually hold. I don't know Anything if it's going to bring itself. up the Janelle Grant stuff and, and just, you know, bury Vince McMahon. I think it's probably going to be Vince is crazy. And here's all the wacky stuff that he did. When we come back, I'll touch on this a little bit more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Yes, yeah, so I... um. I don't know what to expect with this documentary, this docu-series on Vince McMahon. I am very interested in it. We'll see. September 25th on Netflix. My wife was very excited to see it. She's like, do you think they're going to be like serious about this? I'm like, I don't know, but WWE's not involved, so it's a real documentary. NXT Backlash today, now, soon. Starting right when we get off the air. Starting right off when, yeah, when we get off the air. I'm going to run through this very quickly because we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Obviously, the big questions here is, is Julia showing up? Is Stephanie Vacare showing up? But here's the card. Wesley versus Zachary Wentz. NXT tag titles. Chase U against Nathan Frazier and Axiom. You have the NXT Women's North American Champion. Kalani Jordan defending against my alum, Cardoza High School's own, Wendy Chu. I'm wrapping the queen shirt for Wendy Chu tonight. <laughs> Got to support my people. Big Bill, another queen's, queen's kid. Played for Holy Cross or Malloy. I can't remember. I think it was Cross. Maybe it was Malloy. <laughs> WWE NXT North American champion, Oba Femi. Defends against Tony D'Angelo. NXT women's champion, Roxanne Perez. Big fan of Roxanne's, by the way. She's great. Against She's gotten really good. Yeah, Jada really Parker. Good. And the main event, NXT champion, Ethan Page, defends the title against Joe Henry. 
Hendry. Hendry? You know what I think of every time I say Hendry? Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. Hendry. You're going to look out your window, your door and see see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joe Hendry. <laughs> right Joe Hendry would trick Williams mm-hmm. as a special guest referee. This should be a fun show. Can I pull back the curtain for just a quick second? Yeah, second? please. You you uh, changed your avatar on your uh, on your phone thing. I did, and I, I looked, swear I it looks like jo- Joe Henry. It's the same. Suit. No, it looks like I sell <laughs> I sell really bad real estate in Dubai. Okay, I, I don't love that photo. It's a little yeah, I, it's I, a little I, picture. <laughs> I don't love that photo. I look like I I do shady mortgages. I sell used Mercedes overseas, and I also do uh, real estate in Dubai. Okay, not not okay. I don't okay. love it. Jess loves it. My wife's like, no, it's a great photo. It's like, I'm like, I, I need an updated one. Because the other photo that it I have like is like Joe Henry 12 me. years old. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll take that as a compliment. Joe's a handsome man. <laughs> all right, let's talk about this. Um, all out next weekend. This is the fallout for all in. They need to, I don't know. Should they, they're gonna, they have to shuffle these shows. They're going to have to shuffle it. I think next year we're getting a very different schedule. Obviously, Grand Slam yes. was announced as a pay-per-view in Australia in February. Where does that put Revolution? You move Revolution to March? No show in April in, in January. Yeah, we talked about this last week. It sounds like you're going to be a show every month next year. It looks like they're headed that way, and I think that's a positive for them to kind of make stories continue because the pay-per-views are making them money. The estimated buy for All In is between 160 and 177 thousand buys. So, um, you know that that's that's a good number, especially in a world where pay per view is not what it was, and wrestling fans are conditioned to paying 9.99 a month for a pay per view. Now people are paying 50 dollars a month. You're talking about 20 million dollars or millions of dollars in revenue. So I'm curious to see what happens here, but. They're in Chicago. They're at the Now Arena, formerly the Sears Center. Yeah, Sears Center. Yes. Huffman Estates. We had a blast out there, huh? That was such a fun show, 2021, when we went. Hard to believe that's three years ago. I, it's weird. very hard to believe. <laughs> very hard to believe. That brunch that we went to was fantastic. I cannot remember the name of it. Do you remember the name? Everybody was there. Uh, it, Darby was it picking. A, it had a fruit. Yeah, strawberry it was right or something. Next to the, the hotel. Yeah, it was right next to the um, uh, the uh, the, ho- the hotel or whatever we stayed at, in. So, yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. Jim Ross mm-hmm. was having uh, lunch with Will Hobbs, I think, or breakfast with Will Hobbs. Uh, all nice. the talent was walking in. Nobody, nobody realized why these gigantic men were in and out of there. Scary looking gigantic men just coming in and out. And Jim Ross. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, let's go into this card here. We have Will Ospreay and Pack for the International Championship. I wonder if Ricochet is going to play a part in this. This happened after Ricochet's match where Will Ospreay came to the ramp. Ricochet is staring at him in the ring, and Pack hit him with a Poison Rana, which I hate that move. It is so nasty to look at. And then when you slow it down, you realize uh, Ospreay did the whole thing. (laughs) Ospreay did the whole thing, yeah, when you slow it down. I know, it's wild. Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander in a Chicago street fight. This was supposed to be for the CMLL title, and it is not now. So that's interesting. It's not? I didn't. I Mm -mm. thought it was. It is not. Okay. Swerve Strickland, Hangman Page in a steel cage match. I love Crazy Hangman. This is so good, this version of him. MJF Daniel Garcia in a singles. Mercedes Monet versus Sheeta. For the AWTBS Championship, that was played out last night on Collision. And you have Brian Danielson and Jack Perry in a singles match. You know, I, a lot of... I didn't see that one coming, by the way. You didn't. I I didn't either. But, you know, they did lay out a good... They did do a good job at laying out why Jack Perry should have the shot. A lot of people thought it would be Nigel. Maybe Nigel gets involved. Maybe that's the next match. Danielson came out. He cut a promo saying, listen, I'm retiring, but not until I lose this, is this on title. Dynamite. This is on Dynamite, yes. This is on, yeah. uh, I'm, not, I'm not retiring until I drop this title. So who knows when he's dropping it? A lot of people have assumed. There was also a report out that he will, Darby is being considered one of the lead names to beat Danielson. 
Um, yes, I heard this too. And the person that mm -hmm. told me this, I said, I think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I don't think that's the way to do it. So do you do it in Seattle, in a Tacoma? That would be a very short title reign for Brian Danielson. I think he needs to hold this till at least the end of the year. I don't. I don't. Pay per view, maybe drop it, like MJF did last year. Maybe drop it at the last pay per view. Maybe drop it in Australia. Make it into a bigger deal. Whoever you put this on has to be made. I don't think right. Brian. I don't think Jack Perry. Uh, Jack Perry. Sorry. My names are, are are all whacked out. I don't think Jack Perry should is going to beat him, but there's going to be a story here for sure. I think Darby Allen uh, is not the guy right now for him. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. Listen, everybody has their opinion. I think it needs to be a bigger thing here instead of a a very short title reign and Darby becomes a champion. You're going in. You're going into a new TV deal. You want recognizable names holding your titles. You want the crossover. Recognizable, yes, to an AEW audience. Recognizable to a random channel surfer, or, uh, a dis disgruntled WWE fan, not as much. And you're, you need to create growth. I, I, I'm i for holding a title on a recognizable name, even if it isn't the right person for the time. You have a lot of guys on this roster that could do that. Also, Christian holds that cash in now. How will that play a part? That's the other one. Yeah, that's another thing. How are they going to do that? He might be the one they put it on, and I don't know how I feel about that either. I mean, I don't know how I feel about that either. I don't think that's the guy either, but he has a lot of opponents lined up. Yeah, but he's got a lot. Of, he has can get so much heat. It, people will want that off of him so bad. I think people will pay to watch Christian lose the title. Mm, so, yeah, I... You know, I, I don't I don't know what the answer there is going to be. I really don't because we'll see. Dynamite this coming week. AW Women's Champion Mariah May defends against Nyla Rose. Will Ospreay, Orange Cassidy, Kyle O'Reilly versus AW Trios Champion Pac, Claudio, and Wheeler Yuta. Also, this Mox thing. Dynamite opened oh. up with a very interesting moment. John Moxley comes out. Tony Schiavone's in the ring. John Moxley comes out to Death Rider, not his AEW theme. And he shaved his head. He looks good. He looks jacked. Took some time off. Jacked. I like a jacked Moxley. That should be his name. Jacked Moxley. <laughs> I'm going to rebrand him. Jacked Moxley. <laughs> um, and he cut this promo and he's saying stuff and he goes, you, and he looks at Tony and he says, you're no longer in charge anymore. Something along those ways. That was very odd. I was like, do you have to write uh, Tony? <laughs> and, and, and I, the first thing I thought was, oh my God, it's Shane McMahon is coming in. Ooh. Now, do I have no insight on this. I think it's hysterical if it is Shane. <laughs> so what do you do? It's Shane and he starts a fight club. Remember, he's the founder of Raw mm. Underground. Do we get AEW Underground? Is it like, do they do like a blood sport thing? Mm, Shane's been I trying to buy UFC. Remember, Shane Shane is the MMA fan. He was the one that told his dad you, we should buy UFC. This poor Funny man has been trying to, out, he's huh? been trying to start an <laughs> MMA promotion for 30 years. I I don't know where they're going. So, and then they followed up with a, with a wacky, very WWE-ish. Uh, backstage segment where John Moxley's walking and he's talking to somebody that works in the back and uh, you you saw the second addition to his stable Marina Shafir I did not recognize her did you I thought it was Beth Phoenix from the back for a minute I, I have like, no I, I no I it did <laughs> not look like Marina at all and then like they had to explain I was like oh yeah it is Marina so she took out somebody is, in the back. Yeah, the backstory there is Moxley's been working with her for years. And when Renee asked him years ago on one of the podcasts they did, who up and coming do you want to see get a push? And he said her. So he's been on her for like years be, wanting to do something with her. Yeah, she. I, I'm curious to see where this goes. So what's next? I, I mean, her. she needed the push. Listen, I don't I'm not against 
you know, maybe maybe you bring in Bobby Lashley in this. You know, there's there's another story there with Lashley and and Shelton and MVP. There's a lot of ways they could go for sure. They, they you know, they they there's a I somebody mentioned that the 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 likelihood of them coming in is probably sometime if they are coming in sometime in October. Again, not something I could I I want to report because I have no way of knowing. But I asked multiple people, and that was it. That was something that was discussed. That if they are coming, that would be a perfect time for them to come. So I don't know if any of this is tied in. I don't know who else is being added to this group, because obviously, is he out of the uh, the 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 Blackpool Combat Club? Is the Blackpool Combat Club? I, I was dissolved? wondering about that too. Because I was wondering about that. Because too. Claudio holds a title with Pac, and Pac's not in it. Well, it's a trios title, so two of the Black Bull Compact Cup members, because Yuta is the other one. Yeah, so, so I don't know. I don't know what if they if they they let that go, then fine, great. Now now Moxley has a different group, and he's going to build that, and Claudio's going to do his own thing. This is all very interesting to me. Very interesting. They have done a lot of changes here, a ton of changes. And it's the almost pre rebooting, right? It is Resetting a reboot, them. and they need a reset. They need a reboot. And the ratings, you know, their their four week trend for ratings is up six percent, which is a positive. You know, obviously the Olympics are over and now. People are the summer's over, but a lot's going to change here. When we come back, a little bit more here. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final segment. That place in Huffman Estates, Honeyberry Pancakes. What is it? Honeyberry what? Honeyberry pancakes and cafe, dude. Mm, if you are going, fantastic. if you are going to be there next weekend, go, go there. Such a great brunch, like amazing brunch. That's where the talent goes too. So you might see some people. You might see some people. You may see unsolicited plug. <laughs> unsolicited plug. Yeah, uh, they deserve it. it. Was a it was a really nice place. Um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, you know. TV deal. A lot of people are asking me about this. I made a statement a week and a half ago. I said it's imminent. Tony said it's imminent. People at WBD have told me it's imminent. They've told me it's in the hands of the attorneys. Um, but I do have a quote here from somebody that I spoke to last night. And I'm trying to sc scroll up here to what they said. Essentially, it was... They have a plan to, for AEW talent in 2025. There's gonna there's synergy. There's things being worked on. You are not working on things if you do not believe a deal is going to be done. I can tell you that there are there. It may be in pre production. It may not be, but certain things are getting green lit within WBD. Um. Uh, they're, they're planning things out, and there's if there's no TV deal, it makes no sense. So, obviously, they're, they're planning things out. Also, uh, Collision's going head-to-head -head with SmackDown in two weeks. The final SmackDown on Fox. Collision will be on on Friday. Very interesting move. Curious to see how they do. Guys, that's, that's it for this week. I'm so sorry I was under the weather, but I did my best. Let's go watch NXT now. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll see you all next week.